Hey, before we get started with the show, I just wanted to remind you that you can join the Pre-Residency Audio Academy for free for those P1, P2, and P3 students looking toward residency. Uh, it's got some mobile-friendly videos and audio guides uh, just to give you an idea of what that residency process is all about. One of the biggest parts of residency and uh, getting the interview, though, is being able to articulate uh, how you've worked in a leadership position, uh, whether it's at work or uh, in school. And uh, someone who's had leadership positions at multiple pharmacy schools uh, is Courtney Sullivan, and she was gracious enough to come on uh, and talk about her leadership journey and some of the tips that she has for you. So uh, without further ado, uh, welcome Courtney Sullivan from Loma Linda University. Uh, and again, congratulations to all you guys that matched. Uh, and if you need my help, you know where to go, residency.teachable.com. Hey, welcome to the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Remember the Pharmacy Podcast Network. We've got Courtney Sullivan on with me. And uh, what I wanted to do is talk a little bit about uh, leadership. Um, Fight Alta Chi, uh, I, I'd been part of Fight Alta Chi for a long, long time, including uh, working on the board with PLEA. Uh, and uh, their LDS is coming up in August. Uh, but I wanted to talk to somebody who's been a leader at uh, more than one college of pharmacy, which I think is just amazing to, to be able to transfer those skills over uh, and have the opportunity uh, to do those types of things. Um, we've had two, uh, one person on before uh, who uh, did an extra year. Um, we'll talk about why uh, Courtney uh, did her extra year, uh, which is a little bit different. Um, but Dalton Fabian came on and, and did um, an extra year and uh, did some computer science and then ended up uh, with data analytics as a career. And then someone else I knew at the same school, but uh, we haven't had on, uh, had a great, great uh, opportunity at PHA that wouldn't have happened if they didn't have that extra uh, year. So um, that extra year gives you kind of a chance to focus on something. And, and Courtney's focus has been uh, on leadership. So, uh, Courtney, thanks for coming on the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. So, uh, Courtney, tell me a little bit about uh, your leadership journey, maybe a little bit before we started pharmacy school uh, and then how it went into pharmacy school and then kind of uh, transferred uh, here as you've kind of uh, gone up the ranks. I know many people are trying to, to check a box with leadership, but that's that's not really, I think, what most people really want to do. I think they want to make a difference and they want to make a difference with a lot of people. Uh, and it's something that just, uh, as you might say, energizes you. Um, so tell me a little bit about your leadership journey uh, from a little bit earlier on than pharmacy school. Yeah, I think, um, thank you so much for asking that. My leadership journey, I think, comes from my humble beginnings, Um my, I come from a, I'm a multiracial individual woman, and um, my mother was a single mother who worked three jobs to get by. And the way that we got medical care was through pharmacists, through community pharmacists. And my mother would also know, like, which person in the neighborhood was a nurse or something like that. And she would knock on their door. And just seeing that extra need, um, for people out there who just need that warm touch and need the access of care and need the extra resources um, really gave me a drive to get back. Uh, I grew up in a Habitat for Humanity home, um, which is a charity that gives houses to families that can't afford a home or, and they get them out of unsafe neighborhoods and put them into neighborhoods with um, really great education and a lot of opportunities. So because I was gifted that in life, um, I've always just had this deeper sense of needing to give back to others. I first started getting to leadership, I think, in high school, where I started taking on projects like um, Coats for Kids or Toys for Tots or um, campaigns where we would go to the homeless shelter. Um, I grew up in Fresno, California, where there's a very high population of homeless so um, that has always been something that's been really rewarding to me. Um, and as I was doing that, I would start organizing groups of people to go with me, dates and um, different activities. And so that was before pharmacy school. And then I got into pharmacy school and um, someone who was a Phi Delta Chi brother and the APHA president um, came up to me and invited me to an event. And I just got hooked and got plugged in that way. 
Awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk a little bit about background. I, I'm actually from Washington, D.C. My dad's Peruvian. My mom's um, a very tumultuous mix of, of British and, and Irish. So uh, I, I know that. And uh, I remember growing up, uh, we, we never talk about religion. We never talk about race, but uh, I grew up Catholic and I did not grow up in a Catholic neighborhood. So it was uh, really a contrast. And uh, being in Washington, D.C., uh, diversity is just a thing. So it's it's really not um, uh, an, an issue, I guess, as much as it would be somewhere else. But but I certainly appreciate kind of seeing both worlds. And uh, my parents taught me Spanish first. Uh, and then it was the school system that, that taught me English. So it was a little awkward in kindergarten where I didn't speak the language, but I uh, kind of picked it up uh, kindergarten, first grade and all of that stuff. But I, I truly, truly uh, appreciate kind of the both sides of things and, and being, a, being bilingual uh, and understanding more than one culture has is, is really, really uh, been helpful uh, for me. And I never really took on formal leadership roles as in uh, being president and vice president. Rather, uh, I would I always like being the person behind the person. I always like being the one that kind of uh, helps spread the word, obviously, with this podcast and things like that. Um, tell me a little bit about how you uh, used uh, Phi Delta Chi to, to kind of uh, spring off and, and get some of the um, uh, leadership tools that you kind of need as you move along, because uh, you, you I, I just can't, I'll never forget my first day as a pharmacist where the guy's like, all right, well, I'm going to lunch. And I was like, whoa, what do you mean? Like, I'm in charge? <laughs> like, yep, you're in charge, man. Going to lunch. See you later. Uh, tell me how Phi Delta Chi has given you some of the tools to, to be a leader and to to, to work with others? Yeah, well, um, Phi Delta Chi leadership is, you know, one of their highest values. They have PLE, the Pharmacy Leadership Educational Institute, um, and that is geared towards educating leaders to become better. Um, I'm currently actually in something called the STAR Framework um, course, and it's nothing like any other leadership program I have ever experienced. Um, it makes you think about what makes up you and your thought process. You have to do exercises in a kind of, almost like a group therapy kind of setting. <laughs> I mean, and it's, it's deep growth and it is hard. It is hard inner work. Um, and yeah, so that's something that I, uh, one of the resources that I utilize, but really it's, um, it's the people around around me and that are involved in Phi Delta Chi. Typically, if you look at um, which students are in leadership in the different organizations throughout pharmacy schools, you'll see that many of them are also Phi Delta Chi. So having that connection with each other of brotherhood um, also kind of naturally gives a mentorship type of situation where um, for example, my mentor, when I was a P1, she was also Phi Delta Chi. Um, and she took it upon herself to have that deeper responsibility for my success. So every, every semester, she would sit down with me and say, okay, what are your goals? How do you want to grow? And she would give me a list of conferences to go to and, and different resources and routes and say, okay, do you feel like you can balance this with school? So having that um, deeper connection and naturally just all of the different leadership opportunities and having somebody push you in ways that maybe you're uncomfortable, um, but it grows you, you know, that has really helped me. I definitely didn't get to where I am alone. Tell me a little bit about, I don't know how to put this in a different way, but how do you get elected? <laughs> I know that people vote and you get more votes than the other person, but I guess when you're talking about uh, those kinds of uh, positions, president, vice president, uh, especially, I know that students want them because they need to check that box for residency. The rubric says they get more points and things like that. But really the president and vice president aren't there because they're trying to check off points. They're there because uh, they have a deep need to, help others and they feel that that leadership role is one that they can fill. And tell me a little bit about actually moving into leadership positions or, or kind of establishing yourself as, well, I think that my role might be this. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, so as far in terms of getting elected, uh, it's it's all about finding your passion first. And like you said, Tony, um, having that desire. So having a plan ahead of time saying, OK, um, I want to learn more about this organization. In my P1 year, I actually did like the student organization sample platter and I was involved in <laughs> okay. like five different orgs and oh I found, <laughs> yeah, I found which ones that I really felt I aligned with or that my values aligned with them. And, and um, then I started working my way up. I didn't just jump straight at presidency. I started learning the inner workings of the organization and thinking about ways that I can um, continue the legacy that those leaders before me created and also create something new and something that would um, make others want to stay involved. What are some of the initiatives that you're working on, uh, particularly because I know that each person has their own kind of desires, maybe sometimes based on something that happened with their family or their passion for pharmacy, but then also the organization itself may already be set in certain directions. Uh, what initiatives are you working on now? Well, right now, um, I, I, always and forever, first and foremost, always and forever for pretty much my whole life, I've been a really huge LGBTQIA plus advocate. Um, my most dearest, some of my most dearest friends and family members have identified as part of the community. So I've always been, you know, the mama bear will come out if, if I see anyone discriminating on, on that community. And I just, um, I'm so passionate at making sure that they uh, have a safe space to be themselves. So there's that. And then also right now, I think a lot has, has changed with student organizations in terms of membership and engagement. Um, throughout the pandemic, there was navigating the virtual world and then the burnout and then the social interactions coming back after being at home for more than a year. Um, so in, in the right now, I'm definitely focusing on how we can move forward into our new norm and create our, our future because it's not going to be like it was in 2019 and 2018. We're going to embrace all of the things that we've learned through this crazy pandemic and utilize that to our advantage. Yeah, I, I know that right now we, we kind of <clears throat> see for example, the, just the community pharmacies themselves, uh, there's no more 24 hours in our area anymore. It's now eight to 10. Uh, we're seeing that um, sometimes they're just going to be working uh, nine to seven. And we're actually seeing kind of a return to a more normal life where now I can just imagine the kids like, mom, dad, what, what are you doing home? Well, the hours have changed. You know, there's only one pharmacist for the store and um, I'm here. So let's do what it is that families do. And, and for so long, it's been, okay, well, I'm, it's dad's weekend or mom's weekend every other weekend. Or uh, So that promise of pharmacy to be a flexible career, to be an opportunity to really grow with your family, I feel like is, is returning. Um, what are you seeing in terms of students and ways that they're able to kind of deal with the, the stresses and uh, all of the challenges that, that they have, not just as students, but working and, and trying to reach those goals of residency, um, avoiding burnout. Uh, what ways are students now, I don't want to say coping, I don't like to use that word, but I want to just say, uh, what ways are students succeeding uh, where the challenges are? Yeah, um, so one of the most rewarding things that I got to see during the pandemic as a APHA ASP Region 8 member at large, and also as Phi Delta Chi's P Pacific Director of Collegiate Affairs, um, is students seem to be understanding that they expanded their reach on a virtual platform uh, to network. And now that they can be back in person, they're starting to network 
all together in person. And that has been super energizing um, and helps with that burnout because if you can relate to other people, oh my goodness, this is happening. Oh, well, you know, it's happening to me too. What's your school doing to, you know, deal with it or how, how are you dealing with it? Or do you want to hang out and study together? Really? Um, I think that human touch has definitely helped to revitalize people out of that kind of funk. Tell me a little bit about how APHA is going. I know that uh, on the 10th, they made a change um, in terms of masks and things like that. And I know that you need to present your immunization card, no exceptions, uh, to attend in person. But then there are supposed to be green, red, yellow, and then some are going to be wearing masks, some are not going to be wearing masks. Uh, what is it like down there? It's very rare that I miss one, but um, my kids were in the soccer tournament this weekend and, and it just wasn't, uh, wasn't the right weekend to go, but tell me a little bit about how APHA is now and, uh, just the joy of coming back together. Yeah, Tony, you're so missed. I wish you were here, but I totally understand <laughs> your girls are only going to be the age that they are, you know, now and, and being there for their soccer tournaments is so meaningful too. So, um, yeah, right now, uh, It seems like where there's places where there's a lot of people, people are still wearing masks, um, but then when they're spread out, they aren't or where they're eating. So kind of like the things that we're used to, it's nothing too overwhelming. It doesn't seem dangerous. Um, It seems like everyone's being really responsible about it. I really love seeing how uh, people have coordinated their masks with their professional outfits too. So it's always kind of like a nice icebreaker. Um, the energy level is just through the roof. Um, as soon as like the elevator doors opened in the hotel, you know, I saw somebody that I knew and we just like squeed and hugged each other. And I mean, it was like the longest, you know, most warmest embrace because it had been two years or even when I got off the plane, I saw a student that I knew. And so the energy I think is just this huge celebration that finally after two years we can come back together again and celebrate our wonderful profession. Yeah. I remember I actually had a room in Northern Virginia and I was uh, on a plane and like, okay, well this thing's going to pass. Right. And I'm going to still go to DC. And it was just, uh, and then the pandemic happened. So I, I can just imagine how, how amazing it is now. Well, so you're, you, you've shown, had your leadership journey or you're continuing on your leadership journey. Tell me a little bit about what you would like to do uh, once you graduate, because you had the opportunity, I believe with Fidel Dekai to also be an alumnus. So you're actually working with alumni at the same time, you are a student working with students kind of at the best of both worlds. And um, what are you looking forward to doing after? Afterwards, you know, I talked to some of my mentors about this um, because it stressed me out for some time. I was like, I need to know exactly like where I'm going to be (laughs) and what I'm going to do. And just like you're laughing now, you know, um, they just laugh and they're like, Courtney, like I wouldn't have known in a million years where I'd be or where I'd end up right after graduation. So I'm kind of banking on just enjoying the ride, concentrating on trying to get that leadership residency and seeing where it goes from there. I also have um, a California Pharmacists Association API that's um, uh, association management and leadership. So I'm very much looking forward to that. You know, I've sunk my heart into all of the organizational management on the lower level, on the student level for the last four years. So I definitely see a passion there. Um, But I also have worked previously in a level one trauma hospital for five years. And the person that inspired me to even apply to pharmacy, she's a a hospital pharmacy director. So we'll see where life takes me. Um, I, I'm just here to enjoy the ride right now. So you are probably six or seven hours south of Stanford. Is that right? 
Cause you're in Cali, right? Like, cause I'm, I don't know California geography. I'm from, I'm in Iowa now. So completely oblivious. And I'm just thinking of Steve jobs standing there in Stanford saying you can only connect the dots looking backward. And it's so frustrating because you do want to know it's like, well, what's next so I can prepare for what's next. Tell me what's next so I can do the right things to get there. Uh, but I think that what, what you're doing which is just doing the best that you can as you kind of move along makes it so much more exciting because then you're like, well, I don't know what's next. It's kind of like a great uh, TV show that I just keep wanting to watch because uh, I don't know what's next, but I, I know that uh, with the people I have, it's going to be something amazing. Well, I've asked you a bunch of questions. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to say that maybe I didn't ask you about uh, that you'd like to uh, say, or maybe shout outs to anybody? Oh boy, thank you so much for giving me that platform. Um, you know, I just, I want to give advice to students that when you have a person who's gone through it before you, listen with all intent um, to what they say, because if you take that leap and that jump that they're pushing you towards, you are going to grow so much. And um, I think that's really how I got where I am today. I have so many mentors um, in my life that I rely on regularly. Um, Ralph Soroyan, my, he's so, you know, I, I keep him so dearly in my heart because he um, is so, so, so wise. We call him the grand poopa. If, um, <laughs> he's a smart guy. He's, he's a really good guy. guy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I have also so many faculty um, advisors that have pulled me through. Um, Quentin Broussard is one of them who I talk to regularly. And coincidentally, we go to sushi now uh, like once every <laughs> two weeks because I, in the transfer to Loma Linda, we, I now live very close to him. Um, and I have a wonderful dean, uh, Dean Michael Hogue, who is the past president, immediate past president of American Pharmacists Association. Um, I, I wouldn't have had all of these wonderful people to reach out to. You know, I, I don't know where I'd be without them. They are just such an inspiration um, to try to aspire to. Okay. Well, um, your school had an amazing, amazing run here uh, just recently. I don't know if you know or yes. by the screaming, but yesterday was match day and that's a huge, huge day. And uh, I think 22 out of the 29, uh, just in phase one, we're, we're not even counting the phase two uh, that's going to happen, which is uh, close to 70%. So a, a tremendous, tremendous job by the Dean and, and the support that they give is, is clear. And um, uh, I just know how excited people are when they get the residency. Really, it's just, they're two inches taller, the, the relief. Uh, is there for them. So a great university. All right. Well, Courtney, thanks so much for being on the Pharmacy Residency Podcast. I know we'll be hearing great things from you and uh, we'll definitely have to follow up uh, as you move down your residency journey. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.